In this lesson, we're going to learn how to make buffers from polyprotic acids. First, let's look at how buffers work. A buffer is a solution of a weak acid or base and its conjugate base or acid. Buffers are designed to resist changes in pH that are caused by adding small amounts of acids and bases to the solution. Here's an example of an acetate buffer, which is made from acetic acid and its conjugate base, acetate, which is added to the solution is the highly soluble salt, sodium acetate. When acid is added to the buffer solution, the extra H plus drives the reaction to the left according to Le Chatelier's principle, because H plus is a product of ionization of acetic acid, and adding a product will cause the reaction to run in reverse and produce more reactants to reestablish equilibrium. Another way to look at the reaction is that the extra acetate ion is available to absorb extra H plus as it's added to prevent the pH from changing. When base is added to the buffer solution, it reacts with the H plus in solution and removes it, making the reaction run in the forward direction because Le Chatelier's principle states that removing a product will drive the reaction in the forward direction to produce more product and reestablish equilibrium. Another way to look at the reaction is that the extra unionized acetic acid in solution is available to absorb the extra OH- as it's added by giving up H plus to form water with the OH- so the pH doesn't change. Next, let's learn how to design the best buffer for a solution of a given pH. An optimal buffer should be able to buffer against addition of as much base as acid to keep the pH from changing in either direction. Let's look at our acetate buffer again. If we make the buffer with the same concentration of acetic acid and sodium acetate, then there's as much acetic acid to buffer against the addition of OH- as there is acetate to buffer against addition of H+. Let's look at what that means according to the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. If there's the same amount of the acetate conjugate base as there is acetic acid, then the log term in the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation becomes the log of 1 which is zero. That means that the pH of the buffer is equal to the pKa of the acid that was used to make it. To optimize a buffer's ability to resist changes in pH in both directions, we want to select an acid that has a pKa that's close to the pH that we want our buffer to have. Now let's apply our knowledge about buffers to make buffers with different pH values from a polyprotic acid instead of a monoprotic acid. Our generic polyprotic acid, H3A, has pKa values of 3.27, 5.25, and 8.21 for its three ionizable protons. As we learned previously, a polyprotic acid can really be thought of as being several acids, each with their own pKa values for their ionization. Let's start our polyprotic acid example by making a buffer with a pH of 4.00. To optimize our buffer, the pKa of the acid that we use should be closest to the pH of the buffer that we want to make, so we're going to use H3A as the acid. By substituting the pH that we want and the pKa of the acid that we're using to make it, we'll solve for the conjugate base to acid mole ratio that we want our solution to have. The base 10 logarithm of the mole ratio of base to acid is 0.73. That means that the actual mole ratio of conjugate base to acid in our buffer would be 10 raised to the 0.73, or 5.37. Now let's pretend that we're going to make the buffer in the laboratory. For the acid, we're looking for H3A. The conjugate base is just the acid with one of its protons removed, which is H2A minus. You won't just find a bottle of ions in the laboratory, though. You're looking for a soluble ionic compound, or salt, that contains H2A-. When you're looking for an anion in a laboratory, it usually exists as a sodium salt, like sodium H2A. To find the right sodium salt to give you the conjugate base that you need, just add one sodium ion for each negative charge on the conjugate base to make the charge neutral salt. Now let's make another buffer from our polyprotic acid, this time with a pH of 5.00. The acid with the pKa closest to 5.00 is H2A-, which has a pKa of 
We'll use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to solve for the ratio of conjugate base to acid that we'll need to achieve a pH of 5.00. The conjugate base to acid ratio is 0.56 to 1. Now let's look around in the laboratory to find the reagents that we'll need to make the buffer. To find the salts of the ions we'll need, we add one sodium for each negative charge. The salt that we'll need as a source of H2A- for our acid is sodium H2A. And the salt that we'll need for our conjugate base, HA2- is disodium HA. We add them to water in a 0.56 to 1 mole ratio. Now let's use our polyprotic acid to make a buffer at physiological pH, or 7.40. Buffers at physiological pH are important for studying biochemical reactions. The acid with the pKa closest to 7.40 is HA2-, which has a pKa of 8.21. Again, we'll use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to solve for the ratio of conjugate base to acid that we'll need to achieve a pH of 7.40. The conjugate base to acid ratio is 0.16 to 1. Now let's look around in the laboratory to find the reagents that we'll need to make the buffer. To find the salts of the ions we'll need, we add one sodium for each negative charge. The salt that we'll need as a source of HA2- for our acid is disodium HA, and the salt that we'll need for our conjugate base, A3-, is trisodium A. We add them to water in a 0.16 to 1 mole ratio.